Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 15th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering a main menu hub to start looping this game round and round. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel. You can also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, up until this point, when we have dealt with all the collisions and we've done all this, that and the other, and we've got to the point where we can collide into anything and we can end our run. Um, just make sure that you know every collidable object you have in every section does have all of these filled in for the collision detect script. That will mean that any object that we crash into will indeed end our run. So, at this point, what happens? Well, we need to create another scene. And this other scene is going to be our main menu hub. And if we go into our scenes at the moment, this one we have saved is just called sample scene. And we are going to rename that uh, in this tutorial once we have our main menu working. So how do we create this main menu? Well, let's go to file and let's click new scene. And we'll click basic built in and create. And here we are, we've got a brand new scene. So first things first, let's actually rename this and save it as the main menu. So file and save as, and let's go to the scenes folder and call it main menu and save. At this point, we can then click on sample scene and we can rename this. So you can either right click and rename or you can press F2 and we'll call it desert run to be a bit more meaningful as to what it is. So the main menu itself is mostly going to be UI based because there's going to be the idea of buttons being on here and doing all kinds of different things. So let's get that working. So let's go to game object, let's go to UI, and let's go to, uh, if I can find it, I can't find it, where's button? There it is, right there. Uh, let's name the button, uh, let's call this start game. Something real simple. Double click to get it into view. And let's now customize this button and get it into a place that we're happy with. So if you play Timmy and Mousy, which is linked in the very first tutorial of this um, series, or if you're watching the full length version of this video at some point in the future, it'll be somewhere in the description or the pinned comment as well. Anyway, the main menu for that has the buttons down the middle. So we want to have our buttons there as well. So let's move this button up a little bit to about there. That will be the first button to all of this. Now, what can we do with this? Well, we can customize it. We can change the color, like so, have it green maybe. Uh, we can change the size of the font in it. So if we go to here, text, change it to say, start game. Uh, let's make it bold. Let's make it bigger, let's say 36. But in doing so, it means we need to change the size of our button. And we can easily do that by clicking back on the button itself, clicking the rec tool, and dragging this to make it bigger. Let's now move it into uh, a snappable place. So you can see there, as I move it, it clicks with right down the middle, that blue line, that means it is dead center. So that's how it's going to look as soon as we start the game. Perfect, however, we need to modify our canvas. So if we click back on our canvas, we need to make sure that it always is the same no matter what screen size. So on canvas, let's go to UI scale mode. Let's change it to scale with screen size. And let's change it to 1920 by 1080. Or if you want to use a different resolution, perfectly fine. And remember to set the match to 0 0.5. So it is between the two. And there we go. Button looks too small. Let's resize and let's change the font once again. Let's have it as 48. And look how quickly that we've created that button to actually do something. It's been incredibly quick and you can work with this however you want to you know, customize it. You could make it translucent, you could make it completely see-through, change how it looks. To do that, all you need to do is go to your button, scroll down and you can change this here. So you can change the normal color, the highlighted color, the pressed color. So for example, if we go to the pressed color and change it to, uh, let's change it to black, just, just for convenience, press play. And then if you try clicking the button, you'll see 
it goes black. So that's kind of visual feedback as to what is going on. Now, it doesn't look too much like a main menu, but trust me, at this point, you don't need it to look like a main menu. We're only in the early development stages of this. We just need it to function as what we would need it to. And what we need it to do is we need it to go to our game whenever we press this button. Now, what we'll do is we'll create a script that will simply take us to the game. And then we'll create a script that will take us from the game back to this main menu. So we get that looping effect. We can keep going, uh, starting new runs. And eventually that script will lead to fade outs. It'll lead to sound effects. It's something we build up. Uh, so at this point, just get everything happy. You know, make sure you get your button looking just fine. Don't take too much time with it because you can customize it later to match whatever goes on in the scene. So let's now go to File and let's go to Build Settings or if you're on Unity 6, it will be somewhere different, but you'll have somewhere where you can see whatever scenes uh, are in your build. Uh, I might upgrade this project to Unity 6 uh, fairly soon anyway, and we can kind of go over some of these things. All you need to do is take both of your scenes down here and drag and drop them into the scenes to build. And we need to make sure that the main menu is scene zero. So we can move this upwards to there. Now, what this means is that every scene can now be referenced using these numbers right here. So scene zero is always going to be the main menu. Scene one is always going to be our desert run. So we can now close that and keep in mind those numbers. Zero is the main menu. One is the run. So now let's create a script specifically for our main menu. And this will contain a lot of different methods. But for now, we just need to contain one method, which is moving us to our desert run. So let's go to scripts, right click, create a new script. And we'll call it main menu control. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Like I said, we just need it to take us to the game at the moment, that's all we really need to happen. So what we'll do is we will say at the top in our namespace using Unity Engine dot scene management. Now the reason we do this is because we need to let this script know that we are going to use a line of code which it needs to reference this piece here. So if we were to use this line of code without stating this namespace up here, it wouldn't work. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of the update method or the start method. We'll get rid of the annotations because we don't really need them. However, I am going to keep those because we will need them a little later on. So first things first, let's create a new method for pressing this button. And the difference between creating something like a start or update method is this method needs to be public. So we say public void start game, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now at this point, when we press the button, we are instantly going to go to our actual game run. However, we will uh, develop it a little bit further later on the series to give it a bit more of a delay, just to kind of make it make sense. But for now, all we need to do is say scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one semicolon and save. And it's as simple as that right now. Why the number one? Well, if you remember in our build settings, number one was the name of the scene or the number of the scene, which is our run. So if we go to Unity now, and we need to add a game object which is going to contain our main menu control. So game object, create empty, main menu controls, and then drag and drop main menu control script onto there, and you'll see it appear here. We have no variables yet, so it's just a tiny little script taking up a component space. Next, what we need to do is we need to make the button know where to look for things when it's pressed. So if we go to start game up here, which is the button, Scroll down, you'll see this on click list is empty. You just need to click on the plus button and then drag and drop the main menu controls over here. Click on no function, select main menu control, and then down here you'll see start game. And that start game is the method we wrote. So what that means is that whenever we click this button, we'll go through this game object to this script to this method and it will perform it. 
So let's try that out. Let's save our scene and then let's press play. We should be presented with this. Like I say, it's not a fantastic main menu, but it is what it is. But we just need it to start game. Perfect. And we've hit this. Now what we would want to happen is for it to fade out and then take us back to the main menu. So let's build that next bit. Let's go to scenes and let's go to desert run. And if we go to the level controls, I think it is. Is it level controls? Uh, I can't remember what it is actually. In fact, we'll go to scripts and we'll do the, I think it's collision detect, isn't it? That is the script which takes us uh, to the fade out screen. Yes, it is. So this script is on every single collidable object. And all we need to do is do the same thing we did for the main menu controls. So at the top in namespace, we say using Unity, if I put space, Unity Engine dot scene management. And then after three seconds, we play the fade out. So we'll wait for another three seconds. So yield, return new, wait for seconds. And in brackets, three, semicolon. And then final line of this bit, we say scene manager dot load scene and in brackets zero because remember scene zero is the main menu so let's save that script and then let's head back into unity uh okay so it's saying we've got an error uh, i didn't put a semicolon that's why uh, so in the namespace make sure you put a semicolon there and save so head back into Unity, let it compile, and there we go, and let's press play. So we are in the desert run scene now, so let's hit this, fall, let it fade out, and then take us back to the main menu. So then we can do that over and over. So now we've got this looping, so let's, let's hit a different object. Perfect. And it fades out, takes us back here. And this is all about testing at this point. So it's probably worthwhile just going, doing a few runs, just making sure that there's no problems at all. Let's collect a few coins. Let's uh, run into this crate. Take us back to the main menu. Start again. There we go. So it'll just loop over and over and over. Now, yes, I know our main menu, if we go back to it, just has a start game, but it's not much of a main menu, but it is the beginnings of a main menu. So what we're going to do next tutorial is we're going to build up this main menu even more. We're going to put a ground in. We're going to add some more buttons. We'll actually make it so as we can press the button, we get a sound effect and it fades out rather than just go straight to the game. Uh, so remember to subscribe, click the notification bell, and you can stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series. And I'll see you next time.